Hello, and welcome to AA Beyond Belief, the podcast. I'm your host, John S. Today we'll be speaking with Pam W., a co-founder of the We Agnostics, Atheists, and Freethinkers International AA Convention. She'll be a featured speaker, the first chosen for this year's convention, Wastiac 2, to be held in Austin, Texas, from November 11th through the 13th. Hello, Pam, and um, thank you very much for joining me on AA Beyond Belief, the podcast. I've really been looking forward to this, and I'm doubly appreciative for you doing this on such short notice. Um, I'm very grateful for you being here. Oh, no, thank you. I'm glad to be here, too. Um, I'm super excited about the convention. Um, um, I wrote about this, and it's the absolute truth. When I went to the convention in Santa Monica, it was the best experience I ever had in Alcoholics Anonymous. And I've been in AA now for 27, going on 28 years. And that was the best experience I've ever had in AA. And it totally changed my recovery. And you're one of the people that um, helped found that convention. So, you know, I just want to say thank you for that. And I would like to um, get to know you a little bit better. I know that you're going to be speaking in, in Austin, so you don't want to give away too much of right. your story, I guess, but maybe a little bit of a teaser yeah. to get people interested. So would you like to just kind of start, Pam, just kind of telling us a little bit about yourself and your and your, your your basic AA story, and then we'll just kind of take it from there? Sure, that would be fine. Yeah, it's funny. I thought the same thing. Like, what? I, as if my story is all that interesting. I don't want to <laughs> give it all away now. Um, you know, I walked into AA in um, 2008. And so I'll have nine nine years of sobriety in, in July. But I did, I had stopped drinking for about 11 months before I walked into the room. So I had some kind of issue with walking into AA. I had this concept of old men in the dark basements of, of churches, you know, with lots of smoke, you know, <laughs> smoke-filled rooms, older gentlemen. Um, and I tell this, I do tell this story a lot. Um, so, so you know, for me, growing up, things were things were good. I had a happy childhood for the most part, but I always, I was like many of us say, I always felt a little out of place and a little like I didn't didn't fit in. Um, and so I would periodically, I became a periodic drinker. So introduced to alcohol in high school, didn't really drink that much, but when I did, I drank. Um, mm-hmm. And then in college. There were other substances quite popular at the time, um, but I was a poor college student, so those things didn't didn't really happen for me. But I did again find alcohol to be a soother of my emotions, and that was constant for for many many years, off and on. Um, but it had become a problem. Back in 2007, I realized that it was it was becoming my coping mechanism. Yeah. And. So I decided to stop, um, and I did stop, and then about six months later I had a friend visit from back east, and I didn't know how to tell her I had quit drinking, and we went to a restaurant for dinner, and our reservation wasn't wasn't available quite yet, so we sat in the bar, and I, I didn't know how to tell her, and so I ended up having a couple of drinks with her. So I didn't tie one on, and I didn't go out there forever, but I sure felt crappy the next day because I'd made a commitment to myself to not drink anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I usually share that with newcomers because that's what the Rooms of AA gave me, was an opportunity to meet other people and to get solutions and how to handle social situations and to be comfortable with the fact that I don't drink. Um, yeah. Happy hours are very popular at my job. My current job, they love happy mm-hmm. hour. And I can go, I can go and have a soda. I can go um, and have, you know, any kind of non-alcoholic drink and be very comfortable um, until the drinking gets heavy, and then I tend to, to move on. Yeah, time to go home. Um, so when I walked into AA in 2008, I did walk into the AA Agnostics meeting. I walked into the Tuesday night AA Los Feliz. It was a book study meeting, and there were about six older gentlemen in a church. And was that your very first that was AA meeting? My very first AA meeting, and I must have had a look of terror on my face <laughs> <laughs> because they kept saying, "No, no, no!" If well, they said it was a men's stag, which completely threw me because I was so terrified. I didn't know what they meant, um, mm-hmm. and there was, so there was no other women in the room. And they kept saying, "No, no, no! Um, this other woman will be here soon." 
and she did not show up that that particular night. But I did stay for the meeting, um, and they made me feel comfortable. They made me feel quite at home, and I just kept coming back. And um, it's been nine, it'll be nine years, and was it my addition right? Nine years, and in, <laughs> in uh, yeah, in July. So, so was that? Um... The We Agnostics group in Los Angeles, is that what the group that you went to? It was, um, most people know about the Friday meeting, and I did mm-hmm. I did go to the Friday meetings as well after about a few weeks because somebody else said that was a really good meeting too. But it was the, yeah. it was the Tuesday night, and it was a, a book study meeting. Okay. And about two months into my going there, there was a vote taken to remove the book study aspect yeah. of the meeting. And it became more of a round robin, and that meeting okay. has really, really grown and flourished. And I currently still go to that meeting. And oh, cool. Part of part of the reason that I love it was I grew up in a family where religion was not a big deal, or mm-hmm. it was a contradiction, if if you will. Um, my dad never went to church, and my mother did, and she would try to get us kids to go, and I would I would lay in bed and pretend I was still asleep. I didn't know. <laughs> um, did, so did you intentionally seek out an agnostic meeting? No, I did not. Okay. It's so funny is I just landed in the agnostic meeting and it, it made sense because I grew up in a household where there was some religion, but not at home. It was, mm-hmm. it was something my mother did. And then I have an older brother who's, who's a born and pretty much a born again Christian. Mm-hmm. So we have to all accommodate each other and, and respect each other's differences. And I've always loved when I found people in my life before AA that understood that we can all have our different belief systems and we can still get along and we can respect each other's differences. So when I was in the agnostic meeting, it fit. It felt yeah. for me because no one was going to question my belief system or my lack of belief system. I'm one of those people and I, I say this a lot is it's really none of your business what my belief yeah. system is and it's not up for discussion right and you know um i'm assuming is that like was that like the very first we agnostics group it must have been around for a long time i, I, I might get corrected here but, <laughs> um i believe we are one of the first but i think, okay i think chicago um was formed before the right the, the, right the chicago um quad a group started in like 75 and then in la the we agnostics group started um starting up so I, i'm saying it's like you guys knew what you were doing so it was like um <laughs> probably what what other groups were are striving for that are just starting now because i know when we started our group in kansas city you know, the goal was let's just take this whole religion thing and this whole God thing off the table. It's not even something that it should even be, you know, a concern. Everybody should be comfortable here, whether they believe or not believe or whatever. But we have a lot of people come in and they have all this baggage from, you know, years and years of um, trying to conform or being forced to conform to someone else's belief system that they just had to get stuff off their chest, you know. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of talk about you know, God and all this other kind of stuff. But the group over time began to mature to where that eventually that discussion was not even pertinent anymore. So I'm assuming your group was probably pretty mature along those lines. And it was just like an AA meeting without all the, without all the God talk. Actually, Mm -hmm. you know, the running joke is the agnostic meetings probably talk about God more than any other meeting. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Yeah. I would say the core group at that meeting and as well as the Friday night meeting we're definitely beyond that. They, they're, yeah. oh, we're done. But you get the newcomer that comes in and they, they found a safe haven. They found a place where they can actually express those things. And so it's like, I think it cycles where you have, yeah, you might have a newcomer who comes in for a little while and then, and they're kind of need to vent or they need to, you know, get it off their chest. The, the joy I found with the Tuesday meeting, the Tuesday agnostics meeting is that because it's a round robin, everybody, everybody talks. Yeah. And when we get a new person, sometimes we just have visitors and they'll, they'll go, wow, I really like this meeting. This is great. I'm going to keep coming back. And then maybe they don't. But they, yeah. in that moment, they think, wow, this is really a nice meeting. 
Yeah, but that's always are, nice to hear. Yeah, but they're not necessarily looking for that agnostic bent or right. something. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we get people that just stumble in on our meeting, not knowing that it's an agnostic meeting or whatever, it's because there's, they might be from out of town or something, and we're like really close to where all the hotels are and stuff, so we might get out of town or sometimes, and they just stumble into our meeting. But they like it, and they they, they think, oh, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I remember one time our secretary got a letter from someone who was starting an agnostic meeting. This was before um, Dorothy and I talked and came up with the convention. Uh -huh. But he was he was approached by someone asking for our format and we he just was running with it. He was ready to say, Oh, and we'll we'll you know, like I'll send him a fake format with all these like really, you know, heathen like things in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, which he didn't do. He he sent up the format and I I don't know, remember exactly, and forgive me because I should know who that was that got the letter because I have met him. There were so many people that I oh, yeah. that, that I met at the convention, and I, I'm not remembering. I'll remember faces, I think. So. And you know what's what's so interesting about this is okay, we've had these agnostic meetings since 1975, but I never knew about them at all, ever, and um, then all of a sudden. You know, after the convention and I guess what was going on in Toronto, that's when I started learning about it. So there probably, I don't know how many of these things there were in North America, but there probably weren't that many um, that I can, do you think there were very many of them back then? And what, what time, time frame are you talking about now when, when that guy asked for the meeting format? I was probably probably five years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah. A, lot, a lot's happened in five years. <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot. And I do know that there were a couple of other um, agnostic or secular conventions, but I don't believe they were intended to be international. I think they were more local. Right. Um, because I was somebody did, again, I do get corrected a lot, and that's, uh -huh. and that's okay. <laughs> I do believe um, we weren't the first. There was, uh -huh. one, there was one in Chicago, I believe. Yeah, I think I read about that. There was one, I don't know when it was, but there was a convention in Chicago for um, Agnostic AA. Um, yeah, I did hear that, but I don't know if it was international. You're right. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. But so, okay, so if it, I wonder if this is a good point time to kind of go into how you guys got the whole idea about the um, IAC convention and everything. You want to talk about that now? You want to go and... Sure, sure. I'm going to... Hopefully, I'm going to do justice to, to the timeline. It's been a little while, and I'm uh -huh. not any younger. Um, you know, Dorothy, I have to give Dorothy kudos, because it really was initially her idea. Um, mm -hmm. my, my memory was that you know she had started coming to the Friday night meeting, which I was also attending, mm -hmm. and she would periodically um, like crash at my apartment. And we, oh. we were talking one night, as, as we often would do, till the wee hours of the morning. And we had, we'd had a lot of people recently walking into our meeting and feeling very, very relieved and expressing great relief to find an agnostic meeting and to feel like they had been spending years um, trying to fit in or trying to, you know, follow that you know, that other people's concept of a higher power to, to have to, you've got to find it, you've got to find it, and feeling offended by the, the agnostics chapter. Um, and there was such relief in their voices. And I felt, I felt like that's what basically initiated, you know, Dorothy investigating. She's quite the archivist. She seems to have um, a real ad adaptability to, to dig deep and to, to reach out. Um, and I certainly think that, that this convention, the first convention, would not have happened if it wasn't for her, her capacity to, to reach out to people. Um, so we're sitting here in my, in my apartment here in Hollywood, California. Um, and she's like, I think there's, there's gotta be other people like us. Like, why are people <laughs> coming into our meeting saying, I've never heard of such a thing? And <laughs> so she started digging around on the internet and finding there were other agnostics meetings. The thing okay. out there. And the idea was, well, why don't we all try to get together? Why don't we try to make these people, you know, help these people connect? Because it seems uh -huh. nobody knows the rest of us exist. You've got, you know, 
Toronto dealing with their issues. You've got Chicago doing their little Claude thing. You've got the new, people in New York. You know, you've got mm-hmm. list creating. Um, you know, on Deirdre's website where you can find all the other. Agnostics. So that was going on at that time when you guys were talking about this. Yeah, that already it hurts. Yeah, okay. We already had that going. Um, so we just. You know, we did some some research and we started digging around. We were um, we were checking on other you know listings, other central offices. We were finding what we could on the internet. Um, J and J actually addressed tons of envelopes to all these different meetings. We compiled these addresses to all these meetings, and she was she got them printed and we sent out these letters reaching out to people. We were sending flyers, you know, like, Hey, we've heard you're an agnostic. We're thinking about putting this thing, you know, it was just, it just sort of built upon that. Uh And then yeah, I'm I'm not remember exactly when we got the website up and then there was an access to a phone number or an email. And then we started getting emails and people are going, wow, I'm (laughs) this. I'm so excited. And it just kept going. And, you know, we had, brought Jonathan into the mix at, at some point early on. Um, and we were like, Hey, we've never done this before. What are we going to do? <laughs> and we, and we just jumped in and we did the best we could and we didn't always agree. Um, mm-hmm. but the, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I would get a phone call from Dorothy who had just talked to somebody and she would uh-huh. be so excited because somebody saw a flyer that we'd mailed and was, it was in, you know, they were in Alaska and they saw the flyer and they called her. Uh. She, she'd have talked them into a workshop and they were going to come <laughs> and, and things just kept exploding in that fashion. And, um, we just wanted to, I just wanted to throw a great party. I just wanted mm-hmm. to throw a great party. And the, the day, you know, if it, again, I'll, I'll kind of backtrack a little, you know, so we were here in, in my apartment when, when I feel like the, the idea really, um, coalesced, and then in June, the year before, June 2013, we had a, a meeting here at my apartment, um, and we had a couple of people from Hawaii fly in. We had some people from up in Ventura County, which is just north of us here in, in Los Angeles. Um, I think there was, I should, Rich H from Hawaii would know. He actually wrote everything down. He showed me at the convention the little notebook he had, and he he had written down everybody was there and where they were sitting. Wow. So so he should keep that because it's the document, you know. Yeah. Um, so we talked about the convention. Um, Dorothy had quite an agenda. We did our best to power through it. Uh, we did vote on a convention theme. I think I mentioned to the to you earlier. Uh-huh. I had I had I had this idea of bridge to unity. This I was set. That's a good one. I like that bridge to unity. I was I was drafting you know logo. I was trying to design something for it. I was hoping that that would be the convention theme, and I was outvoted. <laughs> uh-huh. So we had the the mini path theme, which I love too. Yeah. And you know, Jonathan created the the logo. You know, the the Wapdiak logo, which now has got the extra A in there. And, right. um, it's actually, I really like it now because it's got the two A's, so it almost re- reflects the AA. Yeah. Thing. yeah. Um, and it, it's maybe more inclusive than, you know, our, sure. I mean, our intent was never to exclude the atheists. It was just free, uh-huh. free thinkers. It was actually what we saw most current, um, most frequently in the na- right. meetings. Right. That was the reason for those. That's what I figured. I mean, because I'm an atheist, I didn't feel excluded when I saw it, and that's how I kind of figured it. It was like, oh, yeah, because that's you know the We Agnostics chapter, we have Agnostics group, so that's just kind of yeah, uh, of, yeah. There were a lot of free thinker named meetings, and there were eight um, We Agnostic named meetings, and it just it just made sense. I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, that was you know that's kind of the history of of, of how things got started. Um, it kept evolving, changing. Um, you know, the website grew. It changed um, our responsibility. You know, we were dealing with a lot of legal, trying to set up yeah. profit. Yeah. That got a little overwhelming. Oh, God. You yeah, know. Yeah, so this is so amazing because, you know, I, I've never experienced anything on the level of that. But, I okay, it's so cool to have an idea. And then all of a sudden see the idea come to fruition. And then see all these other people um benefit from that idea and 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 get something out of it like you know 
I, my idea one day was I went up to someone and said, hey, Jim, you want to start an agnostic group? And he says, yeah. And next thing you know, we now we have like um, seven meetings a week here in Kansas City. There's like well over 100 of us in our community. And I've got all these great new friends. And it's just, it all just came from one little idea. You know, and it's just that I think that's amazing to have something like that happen. It's so <laughs> awesome. I cannot tell you. I mean, it got to that, you know, the, that last month or two beforehand where it got really crazy. And then, yeah. and then of course, Jonathan passed away and it was, it was very hard. Yeah. You know, I, it was very hard on me and um, I don't know if I can speak for everyone, but I, I do believe it was very hard on everybody. Sure. Um, but, on the plus side of that is we sent out a request for an emergency meeting and our little fellowship of the we agnostics here in, in Hollywood, Los Angeles, they showed up. They showed mm-hmm. up. They took on work. They took on more work than I ever thought they would. Um, and a lot of things happened the day of the convention because of that group of people. And it, had they not done it, I don't, I don't know what the convention would have looked like. But they made some amazing, amazing things happen. And the, the first, you know, once we got to those, to the day of, and it, it's like it's done. Okay, we've done everything we can do. Now it's on its own. And, you know, we'll do our best through the convention. I was walking through the, the courtyard of the church that first day and everyone's sitting around in little clusters talking. And I was, I was, I was overwhelmed. Just, I, bet. This, this, I felt like I was in this great hippie commune and everything uh-huh. like peace and love and this I know that's exactly what it was like I it was it was wonderful I'm getting goosebumps just um yeah. hearing you talk about that yeah, it, was, it was so so wonderful and to put faces to to names that I had been hearing about um, hearing people talk about their stories um, mm-hmm. despite the any kind of you know disgruntledness people might have had about choices that were made. Oh, yeah. It didn't matter. It, no, it didn't. <laughs> it didn't matter. And it really doesn't. Yeah. Um, it, it was amazing. So I'm I'm really looking forward to Austin. I'm hoping new people come who can experience it for the first time. Oh man, they will. Um I I am I am uh gosh, I get almost emotional thinking about it. <laughs> Don't get me started uh, cuz I <laughs> I swear to god I'm starting to tear up. But when, when you describe, um, starting that, this is just such a special thing because God, it just started with an idea in your apartment and all these people came all the way from Hawaii and everywhere and everybody jumped in and pitched in and all these people came, came gathered in Santa Monica and it changed people's lives and people are so excited about it and they love it and they're passionate about it. And, um, it's just, it's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah, I like too that um, we didn't take necessarily a conventional approach to. Mm-hmm. We weren't matching up. Yeah, we weren't well. Yeah, of course not. <laughs> but we weren't trying to do. We didn't take a template from a, a local roundup or a local right. area assembly convention, and then match it. We we tried yeah. on some level, but when people said, "Well, I want to do." This kind of workshop is like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it is like, oh, we're going to do a yoga meditation. Okay. <laughs> that's cool. And, and that's what I loved about it is I felt like we were actually getting stuff done there. I felt like, um, people were learning and people were growing. And I mean, we were talking about starting meetings everywhere I went. People was, oh yeah, we're going to start a meeting when I get back home. And this is, it was that kind of energy. I don't go to other AA conventions where people are saying, yeah, I can't wait to go home and start a meeting. You, you still, <laughs> this doesn't happen. Right. You, know? <laughs> you know, I think there's something amazing. I, um, I have a friend who's, who's quite a speaker. She's not in the agnostics home. We're not, we agnostics is not her home group, but she's in the fellowship and, and we've become fast friends. Um, and she gets invited to speak a lot because she has quite a story. And sometimes she drags me along and I get to be her, her, her 10 minute lead in. I'll do the 10 mm-hmm. minute speakers. <laughs> and what I, I always mention my home group and I found that that always opens a door. And I've, yeah. I've, I've, every time I've done it, someone comes up to me afterwards and they have something to share with me related to that. Yeah. The last time 
I had two people run up to me, announce they were atheists, and they tried to start a meeting, and they weren't meeting very often, but they had gone to the convention. Uh, and yeah. they were like, well, we need to stay in touch because we want to get together, and we want to... I'm like, okay, let's do that. <laughs> yeah. But, um, like, they had started something. Mm-hmm. So, it's crazy. Well... The number of um, meetings really grew quite a bit after. I can't remember. I, mean, I remember A. Agnostica published some type of type of a graph, and I think I even have it on A. Beyond Belief, that showed all the meetings that started after the convention, and there's been quite a few. And there, so there's a lot more people involved in this now, and there, I, I really believe there's going to be a lot more people in Austin that you know weren't at Santa Monica, because let's just use this for an example. When I went to the convention in Santa Monica, I was the only person from Kansas City and maybe the only person from Missouri. I don't even know if there's anyone from the neighboring state of Kansas there. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that was it. Well, I guarantee you, I bet you anything, there's going to be at least 10, if not 15 people from Kansas City in Austin. We're talking about getting a bus or something and going down oh, there together. That's you know? Awesome. A bus. I love yeah. it. Yeah. I love it. So this is happening. If this is happening here, I know it's got to be happening in other cities where, you know, last time there might have been one or two people from a certain city or whatever. I think you're going to have whole groups of people come into this thing that um, it's just going to be amazing. That's my, you know, that, I, maybe I should keep my expectations low, but I kind of have a feeling that, that that's what's going to be happening. I, I think it's very likely. I haven't, you know, I haven't reached out to the local crowd here but I, I i've been doing that and i'm see, i'm getting more and more interest you know it's easier when you tell people it's across town than across mm-hmm. states <laughs> yeah it's easier you know two years ago to say yeah it's santa monica come on over and you know people were texting each other when they were there in santa monica you know getting other people to come by this is a little more difficult got to be more planned out but i'm i've been reaching out to people that i met at the convention that i've stayed in touch with um, Mm -hmm. and even someone today she wasn't sure she would go and i'm like i don't you know i've got a room and maybe we can bunk and you know like this is this is what i want people to to remember they can do is reach out there were a lot of people that were sharing rides sharing rooms yeah monica i think as the energy develops that'll start to happen um, mm-hmm. people are going to be looking at a way to connect in advance, to connect there. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited that it's at a hotel because that mm-hmm. was tough for people to, to go to a church when they were staying at a hotel down the road. Yeah. Um, I want to be able to roll out of the bed. <laughs> yeah. That, it is nice <laughs> going to have that convenience. <laughs> But I love Santa Monica, though. I've never been to Southern California before like that. And um, I just love Santa Monica. I would have been happy to stay there forever. <laughs> and I thought the church was beautiful. It was. So, it was a yeah. I, I like Santa Monica, too. I don't live there, but it's it's quite a nice city, and there's a lot to do. Um, and, you're, you know, you're right there by the ocean, and you get that. Yeah. So. so, you know... Um, so this, when you guys, I guess I don't want to belabor it too much, but um, okay, so you, you, this thing really picked up um, press. I mean, there was an article in New York Times about it, because um, I remember mm-hmm. when that article came out, there were some guys in Kansas City, we were just sitting around, and someone said, hey, have you seen this article? And I said, I'll be damned. Um, I thought, wow, that's, that's, that's something. And I, I didn't even know at the time when I saw the article that I would actually be going to that. I don't know where I was in my journey at that point, but um, how did, were, were you guys? Did, was that kind of planned that you guys did that kind of thing, or did it just kind of was it just an organically kind of thing? People get interested, and in, is that how that that you kind know, of stuff happens? I, I think we were just, you know, and I maybe Dorothy could speak to this more clearly than I could because she was out there talking to everybody. She was okay. on the phone, um, but we would get so excited when. You know, because we were posting, we had the website, we were sharing the information. We had, we had talked to Roger at AA Agnostic. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We talked, Joe had come out to one of our meetings, Joe C. So Joe had mm-hmm. put it on his website. Um, and then the New York article came out, and I think there was some connection to them talking to Dorothy. So they had that information mm-hmm. about that. And that really, that really stirred the pot. I bet. We started getting people who saw that article showed up at the Friday night agnostic meeting. Wow. 
and, wow. and became, you know, part of that, that home group. Um, and I think that was really, you know, that was big. It was big. Yeah. And I, I did do some reaching out to some PR people that I knew, um, to see if they could get the, the local press here to do something. And we, we had very little response. It was, uh-huh. we just weren't interested. Yeah. So there was some effort on our part, but mm-hmm. being, being that we're not PR people, right? <laughs> it was kind of haphazard. Um, yeah. But I, I think a lot of why word got out is because people were spreading the word. People, yeah. yeah. People were taking a step. We were putting up flyers. There were places where the flyers would get taken down and the person would let us know that they put uh-huh. them back up. They're like, that flyer yeah. keeps getting taken down, but I keep putting one back up for you guys. You know, <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> It was it was the fellowship, and it was yeah. always for the fellowship that the convention was put together. It always it always boils down to that in AA. It always comes down to the people. It always comes down to the fellowship. It truly, truly does, and that's exactly it in my case too. Because I read the article, and then it was kind of out of my mind. But what happened to me was okay. I was um, I met um, a friend in, in Omaha, RJ. I met her online because I was I was researching. Um, atheists in AA and I met her and I was on a, some Google group for atheists in AA and we were chatting on a Google video thing and became really good friends and she was talking about the convention and then would you know it somehow Dorothy found us yeah, right? <laughs> and Dorothy would join us in these weekly meetings you know uh, these weekly um, video meetings I'm like I couldn't believe this I'm like wow all of a sudden, this person from California who started this big convention, and Dorothy says, you want to go? And yep. I didn't think I was going to be able to go, but I'm glad that I finally did. Well, I'm glad you did, too. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's how it happened. It's just the fellowship. It's pe- one person talking to another. Truly, truly. I mean, the outreach and, and just, I mean, I we still have people walk into our meeting, and as, as you mentioned, too, that walk in and, like, I've never heard of an agnostic meeting. I don't know yeah. to me at that last meeting over in another part of Los Angeles and she says, what's this sweet agnostic meeting? I've never heard of these. Mm-hmm. And this is an uh, older woman who had several years of sobriety. Yeah. And i like, oh, okay. You know, it, it's just, I think you get into your little pocket. Yeah. You fall into your little AA group and that's a safe place. And if- when you were telling your story about, um, okay, you had your groups in the L.A., and you, it's like you guys didn't realize that there were other groups out there There are, that you had, you know. No, we were doing the same thing that these newcomers were doing. We're like, yeah. wow, there's other meetings. Oh, wow, we got it. These people need to know. They need to know uh-huh. that you know each other. And, you know, the thing about sitting in a room with someone who has the kind of energy, an infectious energy that Dorothy has, like mm-hmm. whether you wanted to come along for the ride or not, you're on the ride. <laughs> So, yeah. So I was on the train and it was going and we were, you know, full force ready to go because when it first came up as an idea, I'm like, sure, I'll help you. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm so grateful for that experience. I'm so grateful for being part of that and for meeting my world. That was the one thing with, with AA for me, not to talk just about myself, but you want to talk mm-hmm. to me, right, John? So I do. <laughs> help a little bit. Um, sit. I didn't realize, I never thought my world was very small. I always thought I had a pretty big world. And um, when I got, and I joined, you know, started going to AA meetings, it didn't get big right away, mm-hmm. but it did get really big. Yeah. And I've, I've had a really big world, and I, I know people, as I'm sure you have the same experience. Yep. Like, I know people from the East Coast, I know people from the South, I know people from the North, there are people over in Europe, and I may not be in touch with them every day, but I know that if I were to connect with them at any given point, we have a language, and we have a comfort, and, and we have a compassion that, that, that bar none, you, you, can't, you can't find it in a bar, um, there's just an, a language that we, we speak, and a and yeah. shared love that it, it's it's beyond what I ever would have known that I would have in this life. Seriously, it's 
it's amazing and I'm going to make myself cry. I know, <laughs> it, but it's the truth. It's exactly the same experience with me. Um, I mean, I've been in AA for a very, very long time, but my AA world was pretty much right here in Kansas City and Kansas and Missouri. And that was pretty much it. I might go on vacation somewhere and go to a meeting, but I would, I didn't really, you know, but you know, when I came back from Santa Monica, we all wanted to stay in touch mm -hmm. and we did. Yeah. And more people came to in to our little online network, you know, that weren't even part of Santa Monica and we're all in touch, which is so, which has, I have no borders now in AA. It's like, like you say, it's, it's globally people in Australia and people in the UK and people everywhere, New York and everywhere. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Those Canadians. Gotta love them. I have my family's Canadian, so. Oh, really? Half of them, they're, they're in Canada, so. A little cross border connection. They're, they're not in the program, but. but yeah. Canadians and their family, too. It's just, I don't know. I've, I've gotten really excited. I've, um, I've been being, I've been able to sort of observe, you know, the board moving forward and, and really making some great plans and really making some great strides. Um, you know, there's been, there's been a lot for people to face, but I, mm -hmm. I think, I think they're moving forward through something. I think so. Uh, I think it's shaping up really nice. I'm, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I'm looking forward to all the different things. And, and besides, you know, honestly, whatever they do, it's going to be fine because we're all going to be there together. And that's, that's really what, what happens. You know, that's, that's really the, 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 it's, it's what happens between the workshops and between the panels. It's all the little conversations that happen. It's all the new friendships that are made. That, that's really what it's about more than anything else. Besides this one, we don't go and forget this. Yeah. People get helped. This helps other alcoholics. This saves lives. Um, there are people out there who don't want to go to AA because they think it's religious. You know, they're going to research all about AA before they even go to their first meeting and they're going to read all this other stuff. Well, now they have an alternative. They have other types of meetings they, they can go to where they're comfortable. And this saves lives. This is helping a lot of people. And that's what's so important, um, I think, that about this thing. It's good for Alcoholics Anonymous. We are truly making AA a wider tent, a bigger tent, or whatever you want to say. Um, so, And it's fun, too. Yeah, it's totally <laughs> so. it, It's the personalities and, and just the goofiness and the silliness and the, the compassion. I... You you can't even know. I, I mean, who I, w I had no idea. Yeah. Once that convention in Santa Monica was rolling, rolling along, and it was this craziness of, it was like, it's, okay, it's happening. <laughs> yeah. And and, yeah. and there were these amazing people that showed up with um, a personal investment. Yeah. To their sobriety and to others, I I cannot tell you how many times I cried. I'm looking at yeah. Austin. I'll be crying again. It's, oh yeah. Good. Well, it's got to be gratifying to kind of sit back and say and and just see, watch this thing take off. And plus, not only that, other conventions are starting up now too. That that people have, and I think there's going to be more of those coming up. You know, regional kind of conventions. I, so I think that when I hear that there's regionals happening, I get so excited, and I want to buy a plane ticket and go. But I I can't always, you know, I can't travel the world. That's right. <laughs> Going to secular AA conventions, but I tell you, when I hear about them, I'm I'm very excited, very very. Excited. Yeah. Well, let's see. Um, we have covered a lot. Um, I, I I I'm glad that I got to talk to you because I really think that this is this is AA history and it, it's good to capture. And I never really got to talk to you before. Um, yeah, I'm I, I, sure. <laughs> I met I met so many people, and I'm I apologize to anybody who's listening who knew me and. Doesn't feel like I remember you, but there were so many new faces, and oh yeah, just there were, and um, you guys were really busy. I mean, it was just oh boy, what a thing! <laughs> now you can go to Austin and you can just enjoy the whole thing. You don't have to worry about working so much. Absolutely. Why do you think I'm going? I want to go and 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 be part of it. I want to be a member of the fellowship and just enjoy enjoy the. The program because I I missed out on a lot of events at Santa Monica mm -hmm. because I just needed to keep moving around and it was I no regret loved it yep and you're gonna be a great speaker I look forward to to hearing you uh, do that um, that's gonna be a big deal I don't know <laughs> <laughs> 
a bit of practice. And yeah. I always say, I was like, well, I don't have to study for this because it is my story, right? So, yeah, that's right. You've been preparing all your life for it. I don't have to research and do PowerPoint presentations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Pam, I think that we've covered it. I thank you very, very much for this oh, conversation. Um, you know, I, I'm just, we're going to have other people on from IAC to talk about different things that they're going to be doing too. So I look forward to that as well. Yeah, you'll get a, you'll get a lot more information and because I can only give kind of an overview of the past, but right. a lot more meat from the members of the board as to what's happening and what the plans are. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed it. You're welcome, John. See you in Austin. <laughs> See you in Austin. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that's it for another episode of AA Beyond Belief, the podcast. We hope you enjoyed this conversation. We'll be back again soon enough. So until then, please be well. 